Jordan. You can see us from the road. I only play George. These are your scripts. Martin's Hag, Zephyr. So how many scripts have you actually written in your life here, Gordon? Oh, heavens. Uh, I suppose uh, 20 something, 25 or something. You know, um, they've, uh, they've come and gone. I was even in the practice of throwing them out at one point. Uh, just sort of uh, thought that the, that was one way to recycle my head, you know, kind of thing. And uh, just, I don't know, things were so difficult to try to, uh, you know, in getting them off the ground that I figured I'm, I'm not going to uh, just keep these and stack them up and sit at and wonder about them and dwell on them and wonder why they're not being done and stuff. And so I just simply uh, threw a couple of things out over the years, but these I've, I seem to have kept. Some of them are yellow, as you see. So, so the yellow ones, how far back do they go? Uh, I only played George, how many years ago? Only played George. Uh, I went down to Boston to do a thing in Norman Jewison's first Thomas Crown affair, and I wrote it at that point. So that would have been uh, whenever he did his Thomas Crown effect. Wow. And how many scripts have been produced? How many? How many of the scripts? Oh, well, say of the 25, these. 27 have been? None of these have been produced. So of the 25, 27, 30 scripts that you've written in your life, how many have been produced? Four. And how does that, how do you, we're talking about creativity here. We're talking about, you know, the arts. We're uh -huh. talking about the industry. We're talking about and how you pour things into it and sometimes it returns very little. Yeah, it is, <laughs> you know. Um, I resented the rule that I felt we had to go by in Canada, which was, uh, you know, uh, keep doing it, uh, uh, learn to do something else besides, you know, any, any one given thing. But uh, I felt that that was the richest part of what I was, what I was able to, uh, to achieve, you know, to, because of, to wear the different hats and say, all right, I'm not going to be left here uh, uh, and just like algae on a pool. I'm just going to sit and I'm going to do something else. And whether right or, and I was a painter before I was a writer or an actor, so I can dabble in that as well. And that all made sense to me, but acting was the prime, acting was the big one, acting was what I really wanted, and so I would do these other things to fill up the gaps, you know? So you were shooting Pillars of the Earth in Vienna and you were working on a script at the same time? Yeah, yeah, I had a lot of time to spare. I, uh, it was not the most uh, 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 highly touted performance <laughs> or, or character, <laughs> so all I did was simply sit there in my cassock the Archbishop of Canterbury. What a wonderful cassock it is, too. And I wrote a stage play. <laughs> <laughs> and I sent it back to Newfoundland to Bernie Stapleton, a lovely actress and a, uh, a artistic director of a theater in Grand Bank. And she has the Grand Bank players there, and they put on different things. And it was a great way to test it out. And then it moved over to St. John's at the uh, new refurbished uh, LSPU Hall. So, so your your Creativity, your, it's a, is it a restless animal inside you? Is it a, you know, a fountain that just keeps going? Is it, um, yeah. you it, are, you're either painting or you're acting or you're writing. Yeah. And you're not 25 uh, anymore. So uh, this has been going on for decade after decade after decade. That's right. What is that? That's a, I think it's a fear of stopping because uh, I've come to the truth a long time ago that I was not, ever going to be a master of uh, manual labor or something. I had to get into something that I really loved and I got into a panic because I thought I'm getting, I was 21 or 22 and I got out of a three year army stint. So I needed to have something. So I was living in Winnipeg and uh, I was a commercial artist during the day. I taught dancing at Arthur Murray's during the night and tried to get on stage, which I did, and to do some early radio work. And I seemed to be, uh, you know, 
and a director said to me, or a person said to me, uh, uh, you, you seem fairly presentable. Uh, uh, have you ever acted? I said, oh, yes. But I've never learned how to do small parts. So I don't know how people do them. So I only do leads. And uh, I got the lead. I've never put on makeup. <laughs> I've never been on stage, you know. So I, did, so I did that and picked up another one, picked up a bit of Shakespeare during the same stint and, and Twelfth Night. So a race up the street, one street or another, to see who needed an actor for, for no pay. I mean, it was madness, but uh, I kept it going until I could see firmly that this was not a bad bad way, and I, I think I could prove myself a bit, you know. So you put aside, put aside the painting of the graphic artist and you decided the arts? I did, because um, first of all, I was not a born dancer, so I stopped dancing at Arthur Murray's. Um, Just a minute, I, who hired you to teach at Arthur Murray's? What were your qualifications here, Gordon? Well, there was an odd group of people down there in one building, so unlike anyone else in Winnipeg. And I thought, strange, it has a sort of a New York-y feel, feel to it. I feel as though, and it's kind of a show busy thing, you know. And uh, you can make, uh, you, you know, uh, a little money at that. And you, I had rhythm. You had what rhythm. I had. And what dances were you teaching? But the steps and things were something else. I had to learn them as I went along, pretending that I'd already left behind me 15 years of experience. You know? So, so it was a, it was a game with me. But um, I, I got I got through it. One one little lady, a little old lady, a sweet woman, but a bit. A bit hard. Uh, she was a, a student. She'd already paid twenty thousand dollars for lifetime courses. She'd been up there forever, and her teacher quit. So I was the next in line. A manager said, uh, "That's all right, dear. Uh, this is Gordon Vincent. He's going to be your new teacher." Well, she'd been dancing forever, right? Except she was not. She, uh, I, I took her out on the floor to take her into a bit of foxtrot. She said, I don't want to do this. I want to do the Paso Doble. <laughs> I said, the Paso Doble? My darling, I'm sorry, but you need a little work on your balance. I took her into a room and stood her in front of a mirror, and we did a bit of balance. I said, now, please, you continue this. I'll be right back. I raced down to the dancer's green room where they were all smoking, and I said, how the hell do you do the Paso Doble? <laughs> So they taught me three steps. I raced back up again, and I said, now we can do the Paso Doble. And so you've, you've been making... That's the way I've worked my way through <laughs> Have you been making college. your entire career up, your whole life this way? You uh, kind of make it up as you go along? Yes. Yes, I don't know what I took with me when I left Newfoundland, but maybe chutzpah or something.